So this is Google Docs hacks for capstones, theses, and more. Uh, my name is Gina Kessler-Lee. I'm head of teaching and research services in the library. And Shannon, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah. I'm Shannon Barbero. I'm an instructional designer, part of the EdTech team. Great. Um, so our plan for today is just to um, really quickly go through a whole bunch of functions that Google Docs offers. Some of them you may be familiar with, some of them might be new to you, um, just so you can uh, get a sense of what some of the features are. And um, we've got some quick screenshots and videos in some cases to show you how to do the thing, but you, we will send out our slides afterwards to everybody who registered. Um, and uh, so you can follow along with uh, afterwards. If this goes too fast, um, feel free to come back to our slides or just Google the thing that now you know the term for. Yeah, ready to go. All right, so uh, we've got a few different kinds of functions that we're going to be going over in Google Docs today, um, but a lot of them fall under sort of this general theme of formatting your document. So the first thing that's really key is making sure that you are using heading styles. So you go up to the normal text uh, dropdown and you can say that this is my title, this is a level one header, this is a level two header. And then um, instead of going through and manually bolding or changing the font size of each one, you can set up your um, how you want each heading style to look and then it will appear over on the left in the outline as well. So it's a really nice way to navigate a long document. So that is heading styles and that's how fast we're gonna be <laughs> going through these. We got a lot to go through. Um, and uh, as someone mentioned, the table of contents then is super handy. So once you have, uh, here we're going through and we're setting up what our title is, what our different um, heading styles are. Again, going back to normal text, selecting heading one, heading two, and you'll see that over on the left-hand side, we have our table of contents. But now if you want a table of contents in your document, there's actually a table of contents function under the insert menu where you have all these different options if you want to list page numbers or you can have it hyperlinked to different sections of your document. So I've often seen um, students who are working on a dissertation and going through and manually updating their page numbers as their font size changes or as they add a new section. And I'm like, you don't need to do that. Um, so here's an option too, or uh, an example of how we added a new section. And uh oh, now our table of contents is out of date. But if you just update the table of contents, boom, it adds in the discussion um, portion of our paper that we just added. So um, make sure to use that if you have a table of contents that you want to appear at the beginning. Um, section breaks are also really helpful for formatting. Uh, so there's uh, different kinds of section breaks that you can do, next page or continuous breaks. And this enables you to, within your paper, have different portions that have different um, formatting. So you might want to, um, here's an example of a continuous um, section break that we're adding. So for example, if you're working on a thesis, um, sometimes you have different page numbering that you need to add in the preface or what are prefatory materials of your thesis, and then you need a different kind of page numbering um, throughout the body of your document. The page break is also really helpful. So you're not just doing enter, 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 enter to push things down to the next page. Um, and then it ends up messing it up if you add more content in the middle. Um, so the section breaks um, can also help you as you saw in there add uh, columns as well to just a particular part of your document and not the whole thing. So that those are section breaks. And then um, headers and footers, uh, you'll, uh, we spoke about page numbers a second ago. You'll also want to um, make sure that those are going in your headers and footers. In the header, you also might need a running head for certain types of uh, um, citations or documentation styles and things like that. Um, so now we're adding a footer and you can add your page number in there and you can specify different, um, page number uh, formats, though I will say Google Docs is a little less flexible than Microsoft Word in terms of what your page numbers can look like. But here was a neat little tip that you can add the page count. And so you can say one of two if you need to say how many total uh, pages there are in your document. 
And hanging indents is a handy tool when you're doing your works cited or references list. This enables you to have the first line all the way over to the left and subsequent lines indented half an inch. So here um, we went into the format indent uh, options and then selected hanging indent. And um, uh, I'll just play this again real quick. I often see students that'll come to the reference desk for help with their citations and they'll be doing enter space, 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 enter space, 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 space for every subsequent line in their in each work cited, and then they change their font size and suddenly all their line breaks are, broke, are in the wrong place. So this is a really helpful way for um, students to be uh, sort of indenting um, second and third and so on lines as they're work cited. And um, for all of these tips, one of the easiest ways um, to implement them is to find a good template for uh, whatever citation style or, or document style you're using, like MLA, APA, Chicago. Um, sometimes I'll just do a Google search or you can um, go to docs.google.com slash templates and you can uh, browse a template gallery. A lot of them are more businessy focused, um, like here's a template for an annual report. Um, and uh, But there you'll also find some that are for uh, particular style that will include the hanging indents and all of that. Um, I also just tried out right before this adding, uh, you'll see there's like a St. Mary's College of California uh, collection of templates. And um, so I tried out adding a sort of MLA template of my own. And if that works, I'll go, I can go ahead and add some for um, Chicago and uh, APA and any other citation styles that are needed as well. Um, so that was uh, just some general formatting um, tips and for accessibility, I'm gonna turn it over to Shannon. Yeah, so there are some tricks for accessibility when you are working on a paper and maybe you need alt text for images. So if you have an image in your paper and you need to add that alt text, you can right click on the image or select format. And then you'll see at the very bottom, we'll give you a description box where you can copy, um, input the description for that alt text for images, um, just to make sure when a screen, a screen reader is reading over the paper that they could provide um, that description for the images. Another um, accessibility feature is voice typing. So within Google Docs, if you click on tools and voice typing, a microphone will appear and you can actually click on that microphone and start talking and typing and then we'll start typing for you. So um, accessibility feature, but also great if you're brainstorming, uh, maybe your hands are just tired from typing, or maybe you're on your iPad or your iPhone and you don't want to use the keyboard, you can use the voice uh, typing to help kind of write ideas for your paper, or whatever you're using that document for. And then there's um, read aloud. It's not essentially built into Google Docs, but um, there's a setting that you can enable and then you can download a plugin. So when you go to tools in Google Docs and accessibility settings, if you turn on screen reader support, then you could go to a Chrome extension and some common free ones are read aloud or natural reader. Um, and when you download at that extension, you can just highlight text within your Google Doc and that will read it for you. Um, it's a good way to catch awkward sentences um, by having your doc read aloud or um, just for accessibility reasons, having that feature available as well. Um, next with Google Doc version history. So sometimes I feel like version history can kind of get messy. Um, if you've been working on something for a really long time, like a dissertation, thesis, things like that. And so if you go to file and version history, um, you can name that current version. So you can put a name of, you know, version one, version two, or final version. Um, so it makes it clear kind of the different versions of your papers. Or um, if you want to see all the different versions in the history, you can click see version history. And then you can look at a previous version or restore a previous version. So maybe you shared it with someone and they made some edits that you didn't approve. You can go back to that version history and restore your previous version, which is um, always nice to have. 
and kind of connecting with version history, the comment history. So say you're sharing your paper, a student shares it with you and you're providing feedback or vice versa. Um, sometimes I know I mark my comments as resolved and then I want to go back to look at those comments that were given on my um on my feed for my feedback and so if you just go to your top right and click on that comment box you can now see all of your history of your comments which is um, helpful if you want to revisit feedback that you received or track some progress within your paper all right and whenever uh you're working on a capstone thesis dissertation. Um, the everyone's favorite part, of course, is citing sources at the end of your document, um, but there are a couple helpful tools uh, in Google Docs that can help you with that. So actually just built into Google Docs under tools, there's a little citations option in the menu and you can, um, it then uh, asks you what kind of source it is and if um, it is a website that lets you put in a URL and it will come up with an attempt at a citation um, in the style of your choice. Um, you can also uh, have it do um, citations for, um, uh, let's see, for journal articles or things like that, it actually makes you do it manually. So it'll be like, here's the field where you can put in the article title. Here's the field where you can put in the author name, which can actually be a good exercise for students to be able to pinpoint, oh yeah, like how do I figure out what the author and title and volume and issue number are for this particular source that I found instead of just going to a citation generator, having it spit it out magically for me. Um, but uh, sometimes these citation generators, including the ones built into Google Docs, um, don't know the exact version that you are looking at of something, and they may not do a great job with your citation. So, um, or they require extra work of that manual inputting field by field. So my favorite is uh, Zotero, which is, you may have heard me talk about in other presentations. It's a little plugin that you put in your browser. So you can save things as you come across them on the web or in a library database. And then you see it just saved it to my Zotero library on my desktop. Now I'm going to the Zotero menu that gets embedded in Google Docs, and I can just search for whatever source it was I was just writing about. And um, then when I uh, select the source that I'm looking for, it puts an in-text citation. And then the really cool part is you can say add bibliography and it will update as you go. Um, with everything you're citing in the text, it will make sure there's a corresponding citation at the end of your paper, and it can do pretty much any citation style under the sun. Um, so uh, that is Zotero, Z-O-T-E-R-O. -E if you go to zotero.org, you can download um, the browser plugin as well as the desktop app that then keeps your library. And um, it has saved me so much time in doing citations for um, chapters and articles that I've written. And it just helps me keep all my research organized all the time. Okay, and so that is one integration. Um, we also wanted uh, just to briefly touch on the fact that there are a growing number of AI integrations for Google Docs as well. Um, so one that we know a lot of students are using these days is uh, Grammarly and having that um, check their writing as they go or even write for them in some cases. Uh, and Gemini is currently um, turned off for the um, Google uh, Google Docs under your St. Mary's account. But if you happen to have a personal Gmail account and you pay for, I think like Gemini Plus or whatever advanced, um, then uh, you'll start noticing in Google Docs, it will offer suggestions to help you write um, based on the, uh, the thing that you're, you're writing and, and it can give you some prompts for what it can help you with. Um, and so we're also curious what other integrations you use um, AI based or otherwise in your Google Docs, or if there's any other features of Google Docs that you um, think other people should know about that we didn't cover today. Uh, we'd love to hear about it in the chat. Um, and in a second, we'll go ahead and do the raffle. So yeah, feel free to add in the chat if there's any integrations or neat features you use with Google Docs. 